How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going through the God Books and the Auras and talking about the places that I use them at and the places I'd recommend that you try them out at because these books are incredibly useful in so many situations and of course there is a lot of auras as well and there's some auras that you will use a, a lot of places and honestly it's not always just use the uh, DPS auras, the Berserk auras, that is not the only auras that are worth using so we're going to talk about that. I mentioned this in a previous video and you guys requested that I make this into a separate one so we are going to do that today day and i hope that this video does help you out if it does make sure to leave a like on it do subscribe to the channel if you are new and that's pretty much it for the intro we're going to go through these one at a time talk about where to use the books and then afterwards we'll uh, mention the auras as well anyway let's get started shall we all right so first off what are god books and how can you get them you have to complete the Horror from the Deep quest, and once you've done that, you'll unlock these books, and you can buy them from the guy in the lighthouse, and you, you'll be able to find out who that is when you go through the quest. It'll be pretty obvious who it is, um, but you buy them from him as damaged books. And then you'll be able to go to the Grand Exchange and buy the pages for those books. It'll be like ancient pages for the ancient book, and it'll be uh, our middle pages for the our middle book, and I'm sure you can see how that works. And then it's got pages one through four. To make the book from damaged into a uncharged usable book, you have to put one through four in there. You have to put page one two three and four and it has to be those specific ones however once it's done you can charge the book with more pages so you can use them uh, as, as the active however it can be any page whatsoever so if you can find the cheapest page then that is the best one to use to charge your book up with now once you've charged it up you can wear that and you can also right click and press activate this will activate the book and it'll give you a timer here and it will give you a charge just like a scrimshaw does as well of course i don't want that on right now each book has its own passive effect and they all do different things so they're all useful in different situations. Some of them kind of go together like the Guthix one and the uh, Zamorak book they're kind of similar it does a both of them do AoE whereas the uh, Sardamim one and the Book of Law are pretty much just pure DPS ones. The ancient book does a uh, ice prison kind of like Nexus so it'll do a bit of a stun it'll bind them as well so that could be useful in some situations um, and the Bandos one reduces defense and does a little bit of damage when it triggers but it reduces defense it makes you have better accuracy and it makes you do more damage for the time that it's activated as well. So there's definitely different uses for all of these books and that's why they are used in such different places so we'll talk about that in this video talk about where you can use the books specifically but we'll just go through them one at a time and though not all of them are always worth using some of them are cheaper than others so you may want to replace them out in that situation too. Alright, so the first book I'm going to talk about is the Zamorak book. Now, this one is one that I use at quite a lot of places and is really useful for AoE damage. This one will trigger a 3x3 three three AoE damage effect and the damage will be spread across the targets that are in that area. So, if there was three targets in the area, it, the damage number will be divided by three and spread across those. And obviously, the more people in that area, then the, the lower the damage is per target, but overall, the damage is just split between them. This isn't a super expensive book to keep charged as it is around about 400 to 500k per page which actually isn't that bad so the best situations to use this in my opinion are places where you need extra aoe clearance i use this at all of the elite dungeons as if there's any mobs when it triggers it does help clear those off so basically having this on your preset for while you're running through elite dungeons will definitely help you get through there a little bit quicker as it is just throwing out aoe damage every time it does trigger the Guthix book is the next one I want to talk about as it does kind of come pretty close to this. It will trigger two attacks on a single target and then the third attack will trigger on all things in the 3x3 area. Generally, this third attack will be less damaged than the Book of Zamorak. However, I do believe that if you have maybe like five or plus targets in that area, it could actually be slightly more damage. It would depend on whether you hit on the lower end of the threshold or the higher end of it, but this could be more depending on how many is in the area. Overall though, I do prefer to use the Zamorak book when I'm using it in Elite Dungeons or anywhere that has AoE monsters, as I do believe it is more of a consistent damage. The next two books I'm going to talk about are going to be together as well, and that is going to be the Armidal book and the Saradamin book. These two are basically just damage abilities, and that is all they do. However, there's a few things to note with both of these books. The Saradamin book is based off of Commander Ziliana's special attack, which is the Lightning Strike, and it hits the target between 165 to 275% damage. So this is quite a hard hitting ability and it is definitely something that will increase your damage in PBM by a hell of a lot. However, the Book of Law is based off of the hard mode uh, special attack from Kriara, which is the tornado that spins on the spot. When this triggers, it will hit the target for three times. However, the total damage is more than the Saradamin book by about 25%. There is a few things to keep in mind about this though. One of them is the main thing and that is if the target moves when you do this, the damage will stop. So overall, you do get a total of between 180 to 300% damage. However, it 
comes in four ticks. I said three before, it's four. The first one's between 30 and 50. The second one is also 30 and 50. The third one is 60 to 100. And then the last one is 60 to 100 as well. So you do end up with 300% damage total. But if the first tick goes through and then the target moves, it will only take the damage of the 30 to 50% and then the rest of it will all be stopped. So it's worth keeping in mind that if the target you're using this on is going to be moving around a lot, then it's probably not going to be worth using this one over the Saradamin book. However, if the target is staying absolutely still, for example, the crystals on Seriu's back, they do not move. And this can still proc on those and you can do a lot of damage to them, guaranteeing that they cannot move as well. The other thing to take into account is the fact that this book is stupidly expensive to keep charged. It's around about 2 mil per page, which makes it ridiculously expensive. However, the reason for that is, of course, that this book is the highest damaging book of the lot, which has obviously pushed the prices of those pages up by quite a lot. The Saradamin book hit is something that cannot miss. It will always go on the same target. It does not get halted. It is all in one damage tick. So regardless of whether the target moves or not, the hit will still go through. The pages for this book are quite a lot cheaper, around about 800k to 1 mil, depending on what day it is, it seems. <laughs> but these pages are quite a lot cheaper, and it is only slightly less damage. However, for the people who are looking to get the most damage out of these books, then of course the Book of Law, the Armidal one, is going to be the best one that you can get, assuming all of the hits do go through. Places that these books are really useful is basically anywhere that you have a single target that you need to deal a lot of damage to fairly quickly. Remembering the fact that the tornado from the Book of Lord does stop the attacks, I would use this at places that the targets are not going to be moving. For example, the book on Seriu's back is a great place to use this, or people use it at next as if it does proc on the minions, it pretty much kills them almost straight away meaning a lot quicker kill time as you do not have to deal with that minion on the side of Nex's room as well. Also, during the fight in Nex, there's a good chance that she's going to be standing still when this does proc, as you don't need to bait her that much except maybe in the second phase and the final phase, but even then, you can sort of keep her still and it's not too much of a big problem. Otherwise, personally, I tend to use the Saradamin book in most places when I have a single target for a boss. For example, at Raksha, I will use the Saradamin book as I am running around a hell of a lot. I, the, the rock falls, the Raksha doesn't really stop moving. I walk all of my bleed and all that sort of stuff so it just makes sense for me personally to use the Saradamin book here however in the final phase on phase four then the book of law would technically be best in slot for that one as well so I guess it's all preference it also needs to be taken into account the cost of running the book and whether that's worth it to you if you are someone who's getting stupidly high amount of gold per hour seeing as you're getting fast kills then the book of law is probably best for you seeing as you'll get the most out of it however if you're someone who just wants that extra damage and doesn't want to pay two mil per page then the Saradamin book is probably best to use for you as well so there's two more books left. The next one I'm going to talk about is the Bandos book. This one is basically mostly used for its fact that it reduces the target's defense level and also increases its affinity values as well. So what this means is you will hit harder and you will hit more often. When this does trigger, it applies a 12 second debuff to the target and it also deals 90 to 150% damage. The damage really isn't that much noticeable as it is quite a low value. However, it is a little bit extra, but the main point is that 12 second debuff where their defense level is dropped by 5% plus five and also your the affinity values are increased by three which means that you'll be hitting more accurately for those 12 seconds but not only that the hits that you do actually get through will be hitting quite a lot harder as well i know this book is used a hell of a lot at telos as your accuracy there is not 100 percent but when this triggers it does help out a hell of a lot getting more damage in and being able to hit it more accurately is ridiculously useful and it is not that expensive to run this book either i think the page is around about 150 to 200k depending on where they're buying at the time but that is really cheap to run this book is is really really cheap this book can also be one of the best in slot books for certain situations like i said if the boss has really high affinities and your accuracy is just terrible then it will help out a hell of a lot i know this book is really useful in certain situations especially if you're doing group bosses where you don't have someone using, for example, a Statius Warhammer. When the buff does apply, everybody in that group will actually get the same buff as it does apply the debuff to the actual boss and not just you as an individual player. Places where I'd recommend you try this book out is definitely Telos, assuming you're not using a Statius Warhammer. Or if you're doing any bosses that have a low hit chance and you're not using things like Berserk Aura or Nihils to increase your accuracy. For example, if you were doing a Raxor and you didn't have a Berserk Aura, you weren't using an Accuracy Aura, you wanted to learn maybe with Vampirism, it might be worth bringing this book to make sure you can hit it a little bit more accurately. And the same probably applies for Nex as well, assuming you're not already boosting your accuracy to the point where it's not worth bringing. 
And finally, we have the ancient book, the Zaros book, the purple one with the ridiculously cheap pages. And there's not really anywhere that I would suggest you have to use this book. It's just something that you can chuck on if you really want to just have some extra damage, but don't really want to pay too much. The pages cost less than 100k each, and you do get a damaging uh, special attack that does between 120 to 200% damage. Now, that is not that high considering the other DPS ones. So the prices of these pages are shown because there's not that much use for it. However, there is the uh, the binding effect from this, so you do get a binding of four seconds. It will basically do the ice prison that happens in Nexus um, ice phase, <laughs> and um, it, it, once that breaks, it will do the uh, the damage there. But it is a single target thing, and it is a fairly low damaging ability compared to the others, so that's why it's so cheap. But if you ever need some cheap damage and you don't need to really go all that far out from it, then I guess you could consider this book. But otherwise, I don't think this gets much use in much places. Alright, so we've covered all the god books and we've talked about where I would suggest you use them and how I use them personally. And we've also talked about the things like what the special attacks do and how much they cost. So hopefully that has helped you with your understanding on how those work. And maybe you can consider yourself now where you can use them in the future. The next thing I wanted to talk about is going to be the auras. This shouldn't take too long to cover as they're kind of straightforward and there's not that much to talk about in the way of PVM auras. But it's definitely something that is worth talking about as it's not always just chuck on your berserk aura and go to town. So for PVM auras, there is only a very few that really is worth talking about in this video because they kind of shine a lot ahead of the other ones. So the ones that I would mention is the DPS auras, of course, the Berserk ones like Maniacal, uh, Berserk and Reckless. These are going to boost your accuracy by a lot, increase your damage by a lot at the same time. However, you do need to keep in mind that this does reduce your defense level, so you will be receiving more damage. This is usually not that big of a deal as you are getting through kills a lot quicker and doing more damage usually means that you end up either soul splitting more back or obviously if you get a kill over and done with sooner, then you end up needing less food. Other auras that are worth looking at is the Dark Magic aura, the Majora aura and the Inspiration aura. The Dark Magic one and the Majorat one are DPS auras. The Dark Magic will apply a damage over time effect to your opponent based on the combat style you are using. And those hits will sort of degrade over time, but then once that is done, it can apply again. The Majorat one will boost your damage by a flat 5%. However, unlike the Reckless, Maniacal and Berserk auras, this 5% damage is not removed when you're inside a Death Swiftness or a Sunshine or using Berserk. When you are using Maniacal or Reckless, for example, and you are in your Sunshine or Death Swiftness, you do not get the damage boost from the aura while you are inside that, except for the very last tick. So while these are technically slightly less DPS than the Berserk auras, they are worth using in certain situations, and we'll talk about that once we get to them individually. Next up, the Inspiration aura is an aura that will give you an extra 0.5% adrenaline every time you deal damage. This can be super useful in certain situations as if you say for example use rapid fire, each hit will give you 0.5% of your adrenaline back. But not only that, if you use things like corruption shot or corruption blast, that damage that spreads out, the bleed that spreads to uh, other monsters and stuff, this can stack up your adrenaline as well as each tick on each monster does increase your damage by 0.5% as well. If you use Natural Instinct and you have this as well, that will also affect this and double that to 1% too. So you can increase your adrenaline a hell of a lot faster when you use this aura, and it does actually stack up quite a bit, meaning you can fire off more things like Dark Bow Specs or any thresholds that you've got waiting for adrenaline. You basically shouldn't have any issues with adrenaline when using this. Then you have your Accuracy Auras, which are the lower tier DPS Auras, I suppose. They are basically just going to boost your accuracy at certain bosses, which is useful. However, they do not give as much accuracy as the Reckless or the Maniacal ones, the Berserk Auras, which also increase your damage as well. I'm not going to cover those individually in this video, so I will just let you know that these are basically just worth using when you're just going somewhere that's not all that in need of too much damage boost, but you do need a little bit of accuracy. I wouldn't suggest using these in many places if you have access to the other ones. But of course, if you don't have access to the Berserk ones, then it is definitely worth using these because they're going to still boost your accuracy, which will help you out by quite a lot. Finally, we have the Vampirism Aura, which I'm just going to tell you about now as well. That is worth using if you are learning a boss and you're running out of food, but you want to stay in that fight long enough to get used to the mechanics. You don't have access to these other auras as well, and it is definitely worth using in just basically situations where you want to AFK a little bit more, or where your food consumption is high and you want to reduce that, or when your food consumption is very low and you want to be able to go without any food whatsoever. This is basically an aura that will help you AFK bosses like God Wars 1 bosses, or if you're just doing a bit of AFK PVM, like a bit of Slayer or something like that, then you can use this there as well. So now we've explained what the auras are, and we've talked about the ones that are worth using. This next bit really won't take that long to do, so don't worry, it shouldn't drag on much longer. 
basically the way you want to do this is all the berserk auras are technically your best in slot auras these are going to be the best ones for using in most situations where you want to get a lot of accuracy and a lot of dps these will probably provide you with the most dps increase however do keep in mind that you will take more damage while these are active so most of the time when you're pvming you'll be using these auras as they are going to be your best source of damage once you've been to certain bosses with these you are going to probably not want to go there in a lot of places without them for example next with reckless is absolutely so much better than without it your accuracy boost is absolutely great your damage boost is absolutely great once you go with reckless and then go back with even just an accuracy aura or something else you notice that you miss a hell of a lot more when you don't have reckless active so anywhere where your accuracy is not 100 percent or not close to 100 percent then these auras are going to be your best in slot auras you need the accuracy is super important and things like AOD, things like Nex and bosses like Telos. These are all going to be your best in slot auras as you do need accuracy. And while you do get that great accuracy, you also get a damage boost at the same time. However, for bosses where you don't need that accuracy boost, yes, you will still get a great damage increase. But there is other auras that you can use at these and I'll talk about those as we do get to them. Next up, I'll talk about Majorat and Dark Magic, and we'll talk about these together because they're kind of similar in the way that they basically just give you damage. They do not reduce your defense level, so you don't take any extra damage yourself. But overall, they're still really good DPS auras. Dark Magic and Majorat are absolutely great at places like Raksha, and I'd say probably Solak as well, as your accuracy is pretty high there already. Personally, when I do Raksha, I tend to use the Dark Magic aura as I can extend it by another hour, so I can commit to two hours there. And I don't notice that much difference between kill times. There may be a few seconds, but it's really not that bad. And I think even my personal record might actually be on Dark Magic. So that's something to keep in mind as well. These auras also work absolutely great in elite dungeons as you can get piled by quite a lot, especially in ED1 <laughs> by all the mobs in there. They hit like absolute trucks. So having that where it doesn't reduce your defense so you don't take a hell of a lot more damage. This can be super useful for people who are trying to learn the dungeon and don't want to take that extra damage or people who struggle with food. They still work great on the bosses. They still give you that enough damage increase where you can get through. You can still do a two cycle Seryu on Dark Magic or on Majorat. It's not that much big of a difference. You can still one cycle at Ambassador on these as well. And of course you are going to take less damage so you use less food. And it also just means that it's a little bit more chilled out. So overall I would suggest using these auras where you don't need accuracy as much. And also at Elite Dungeons if you seem to be taking too much damage while using the Berserk auras. One thing to keep in mind is if you are doing this in a group, if you are doing Raksha, if you are doing or trioing an elite dungeon, only one person should use the Dark Magic Aura. If you're doing any sort of group PVM, the Dark Magic Aura can only stack with one person. If there is three people using it, only one person's aura will be triggered. It does not stack across everybody. The Inspiration Aura, I do not actually have unlocked myself, but I have heard that this is a great aura to use at places like Raksha, places where, again, your accuracy is really not that needed, but if it's a DPS dummy like Raksha is, having that extra adrenaline to dump out specs like Dark Bow specs and throw off all your thresholds the second they're off cooldown, this can be absolutely great to use there. From what I hear, you hardly ever run out of adrenaline. You always have adrenaline to use things like your Dark Bow, to use things like your thresholds, get as much damage in as you can. So this is definitely something that's probably going to be worth you trying out at places like that. I will probably unlock this as soon as this video is done and i will probably try it out there as well but i hear good things about this in certain places where you don't need accuracy but the extra adrenaline could help you get through a hell of a lot quicker keep in mind auras like this and like the dark magic and the madrat also stop you from putting your reckless and stuff on cooldown which means you don't have to use aura resets so if you've already used your reckless at raksha for example because you prefer to use that you can then use dark magic afterwards and then madra after that and you don't have to spend any aura resets so that is pretty much all of the auras covered and that brings us towards the end of the video. I hope it has been helpful to you. I hope the information that I've given has helped you out. I know this kind of probably does feel a bit like a lecture. Me just sort of saying like this aura, just do it here, just do it this. This is how it works. I'm sure it's been kind of a long video to get through, but I hope that it has helped and I hope the information is useful. I'll make sure to put timestamps in the description so you guys can come to your specific auras. But also guys, keep in mind that this is the places that I use my auras. This is the places I use the God books. And I'm not saying that these are 100% the absolute best places to do so. You also need to take into account things like how much money you want to spend on pages per hour. For example, the Book of Law is technically the best in slot book, but it is stupidly expensive. So personally, I just use the Saradmin book everywhere that I would use just a DPS one. And then also it may just be more useful for you to just reset all of your auras and just use Zerk auras 24 seven if you're not that fussed about Marks of War. But that is how I use my auras. That is how I use my God books. I hope the information has helped you understand where you can use them and does help you out in PVM in the future. 
But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, if it did help you out, leave a like on it. Do subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you all so, so much to my channel members. You guys are absolutely awesome. I really appreciate the extra support. If anyone else is interested, do click on the join button, buy the sub button, and have a look at the perks you can get while supporting the channel. But other than that, guys, thank you all so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.